When you're starting your journey as a professional video editor, it can feel so overwhelming. And the first hurdle that you end up overthinking is which is the best editing software for professionals? Is there an industry standard editing software? And what if I choose wrong? In this episode, you'll learn the four best professional video editors. And of those, which editing software do professionals actually use so that you don't waste years learning the wrong professional video editing software? Hello Splicers, welcome to the video editing podcast from Unsplice. On this show, you'll hear industry secrets and practical tips to help video editors and teams create better commercials, reels, and documentaries faster so they can earn more money from the same amount of work. I lay bare my 15 years industry experience as a documentary and commercial editor for clients like Vice, BBC, Ogilvy and more, so that you can learn from my lessons and edit like a pro in a third of the time. Of course, if you are listening to this episode or watching this episode on YouTube, you are probably at the beginning of your journey as a professional video editor. And this is where everything kind of feels jaded. You have no idea what to learn first, what order to learn everything, and it can feel super overwhelming. And it can quite often just put you off a little bit and you end up stalling and it takes years to get your career off the ground. I'm here to make that process a lot, lot easier. It can feel like a mountain. This first decision is like, oh, which do I learn? Because if I learn the wrong one, I could end up spending years wasting my time and what if I need to learn another one further down the line there are so many ifs there are so many worries surrounding this it can feel like a mountain but actually this decision is more of a molehill and so don't worry don't spend too much of your mental energy on this decision it really doesn't have to be too hard hopefully at the end of this episode you'll have made that decision up and you won't have to worry about it anymore. So each software has its perks. Nothing is perfect. None of the software that we're going to talk about today is perfect by any means. And everything has pros and everything has cons. Now, let's talk about the actual software and list some of the benefits of each of those and the kind of situations where you might find this software being used in a professional setting. Now, first up, we're all familiar with, we've heard the name everywhere, it's Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro really has become an industry standard within certain industries. If you're looking to work within high-end broadcasts or streamers, or you're working in scripted, you're not going to find Premiere Pro. But pretty much everywhere else, you will find editors using Premiere Pro. Why is this? Well, the main reason is because of the Adobe Creative Suite. It comes as a package, as part of Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, InDesign, Acrobat Pro. As a user, I use not only Premiere Pro, I use After Effects for motion graphics. And there really is nothing out there that is as good as After Effects. So the fact I can get both of those together as a package, bonus. Also, I use Photoshop to adjust images. I use Illustrator. I also use Acrobat, it's fantastic for, for working with PDFs. And I also use Lightroom as well for some images. And the fact this all comes as a package is actually really appealing. And I hear a lot of people talk about how expensive Premiere Pro is. Well, if you're only using that one package, you can get it kind of half price to the Creative Suite. But the fact that you get all of this software in one package is actually really good. And from a corporate or a commercial perspective, that is a huge, 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 huge plus. And that is where Adobe is making most of their money. And that is also, these are the same people that are hiring you as a freelance video editor to work on their projects. So bear this in mind for all of the softwares that we're going to be talking about in this episode is you really want to be learning what your employer, what your future client is going to be using. So base your decision on the industry that you're going to be going into because you may have to relearn it or you may not be hireable if you decide to learn a piece of software the client that you want to be working with does not use. 
it's going to be one of the first questions they ask you. What software do you use? Oh, you use uh, Final Cut Pro, do you? Okay, well, we work in Premiere Pro, so this is not a good fit. So that's the kind of the risk that you face going forward. So Premiere Pro is really built for speed. And that is why so many corporations and companies love it. It's great at churning out versions of content. If you're creating a short form piece of content, um, I say, wait, I say short form, I mean five minutes, which on social media platforms is actually long form, but I come from a more traditional broadcast background. So long form for me is 30 minutes and short form is five minutes and less. Premiere Pro really is built for speed and you can create tons of versions of a longer form edit. You can create shorter versions very, very quickly, very swiftly. The interface allows you to do that. And, you know, they've brought in all of these uh, speech to text and editing using text. These are all tools with the idea of editing faster. It's all about efficiency, workflow, speed. That is what Premiere Pro excels at. It's really good for that. And for corporations, for companies, for commercial side of the business, speed is the essence because time is money. Whereas with something that's perhaps a bit more long form, broadcast, for example, scripted, where an edit for an hour and a half film could take two years. You know, speed, it's a lot slower. The movement of everything is a lot slower. Uh, we don't need skyrocket speed. So those are the differences there. The cost, I think, is around about $50, 50 pounds-ish per month. And a lot of people bulk at that. But I guess if you're coming from the standpoint that software should be free, then why and what incentive is there to improve a product if it's if it's free? I guess I'm a little bit old school in the sense that when I was learning, when I was growing up and I started my life in graphic design, working in Photoshop and Illustrator, and then I later moved into motion graphics using After Effects. And as I was coming up and learning this in the late 2000s, the software, the Adobe software was many, many, many thousands of pounds to the point where it was impossible for anybody other than corporations to own a license. And they understood that, you know, students didn't buy a license, but they didn't crack down on piracy as much as they could because they understood that that's not where their money is coming from. Their income is coming from corporations, from the commercial side. So I'm talking two, three, five thousand pounds for a license for one version. Now you're getting it for 50 pounds or 50 dollars a month. And in my eyes, that's a bargain. That's really cheap. But of course, if you're just coming into the industry, I can understand how 50 pounds a month when you're not earning anything from editing can seem like a steep price to pay. I can assure you it's not once you start earning, but there is a way that you can get a discount on Premiere Pro. We'll get to that at the end. So that kind of covers Premiere Pro and the costs, the pros, the cons are that you need to work within a certain technical workflow. So you need to treat your assets, not just drag in MP4s and drag in MP3s. You need to treat your assets very carefully in a specific edit, edit workflow. Otherwise, Premiere Pro can slow down and it can sometimes crash. It has a reputation for crashing. Nine times out of 10, it's user error because they're not practicing correct technical workflow. More on that in the next episode. But that kind of covers the pros and cons of Premiere Pro. Now, a lot of people who come from Premiere Pro, who get fed up of it, they decide to move on to DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is free in a standard license. So if you are just going to work within HD and you don't need 4K, then you can actually use DaVinci Resolve for free. Uh, if you want to use 4K, then you have to pay, but it's a one-time purchase for the license. Now, because of that reason, it's incredibly popular with indies, indie production companies and indie filmmakers because you only have to pay once and then you've got the software. And if you're working alone, and this is, 
this is really the, the best or the only situation where DaVinci Resolve makes sense. If you're working alone in your own production bubble and you're not working with outside companies, then DaVinci Resolve is really powerful. But if you want to collaborate, then it's a nightmare. Pros of DaVinci Resolve are the color grading. It's best in the industry. It's really, really incredible. I use DaVinci Resolve if I want to do any color grading, and I know tons of other filmmakers who do. You take it out of Premiere and you grade it in DaVinci Resolve, and then you take it back because it really is that powerful. It's a fantastically quick and very versatile color grader. As a piece of editing software, the editing side is fairly new. It's grown in popularity since, but it is no match to some of the other editors who have been around for decades. I do believe that DaVinci Resolve will come up through the ranks. Give it time, and I do think DaVinci Resolve will have a stronger hold in the industry in 10 years. But right now, it's still kind of small fry. That's DaVinci Resolve. It works slightly different to the other editors, the other NLEs, by the way. All of these software are called NLEs, non-linear editors. This NLE works slightly different in that all the other NLEs work on a track, video tracks. You've got track one, there's a layer with your video on. Track two would be on a layer on top of that, kind of like how Photoshop layers work. That's how these tracks work. DaVinci Resolve is different in that it uses nodes. Now a node is just a thing, an object that exists in space, and then you connect it to other nodes. So it's a slightly different way of working. And you know, you can have webs of nodes rather than just stacking things. If you wanted to jump between that and something else, then it is a slightly different way of working. Worth bearing in mind. Next on the list is Avid Media Composer. Avid Media Composer is like a dinosaur in the industry. It was first developed to help editors who were coming from film, from physical, cutting on physical decks into the digital world. And it works very much the same. If you have an understanding of physical cutting, then Avid Media Composer makes sense. Let's say the digital generation is a little more confusing. It's not drag and drop. Everything is done using the keys and it's a different psychological way of working. You have to think a little bit more about what it is that you're creating and it doesn't give you as much scope to experiment on the timeline. It's used predominantly in Hollywood on scripted, on streamers and high-end broadcast. So you'll find Avid Media Composer within the, the editing suites of these huge companies. Do I like it? No, I hate using Avid Media Composer. It's just the interface feels like something from the late 90s. It's just atrocious to use, but it's known for its stability. And that is what is really, really important within Hollywood, within this, uh, within this world of scripted and streamers. Stability and collaboration and collaboration for collaboration alone. There is no other editing software. There's no other NLE like it. That is why this works so well, because you'll be working with a team. If you're working on scripted or high end broadcast, there'll be the editor. There's going to be an assistant editor, maybe two assistant editors. There might be even be a story editor. You know, you could have a group of editors all working on the same thing and they don't get on it on each other's toes. Whereas if you had four editors working on one project within Premiere Pro, it can be easy to step on each other's toes to move an asset around and then it becomes offline in another place. And well, Avid works differently in the sense that it references bins that exist on physical space. Is it worth learning only if you want to get into those specific fields? Scripted, high-end streaming and high-end broadcast. And Final Cut Pro is the only other piece of professional editing software worthy of this list. Final Cut Pro 7 was incredibly, incredibly powerful. It was stable. It was the industry standard up until around about 2010-ish, something like that. I remember using that and loving it. It's great. And then they brought out Final Cut Pro X, 
which was terrible and it was aimed at consumers as opposed to professionals. And then all the Final Cut Pro 7 users abandoned it and moved over to Premiere Pro. And so I don't have a lot of good things to say about Final Cut Pro. It is a very simple user interface. It's very consumer friendly and it's very popular for indies because again, one time license. So it's very budget friendly and it's very, very good for organization. It uses tags and other fantastic ways of organizing footage so that you can find things very, very quickly. It's a very smooth interface. It does work slightly different to, to Premiere Pro and perhaps other traditional NLEs, but I don't think it should sit here in this professional list. However, professionals use it in the indie sphere. Solo creators who don't have to collaborate with external uh, people at any point find this very smooth because it really is quite stable and it's rendering speeds are fantastic. So if you are creating stuff in 4K and you're shooting it and you're editing it and you're doing the whole pipeline yourself and you're working on a Mac computer, then Final Cut Pro is super fast. It was very, very beneficial. But if you're going to start working with other clients as a freelance video editor and not just a filmmaker, then Final Cut Pro really falls to the bottom of this list. So what video editing software do professionals use and which one should you choose it depends on your industry of course of course you knew i was going to say that depends which industry you want to get into but it really comes down to two options if you want to get into scripted and you want to work in hollywood or feature films um, or you work want to work on high-end broadcast and streaming then it's going to be avid but if you're going to learn avid then you're going to start as an assistant editor anyway and you'll probably learn it on the job so do I recommend you learn it before you start in that position? Well, I think it's good to have an understanding of it, but you don't have to know how to edit efficiently in that program. So my recommendation is to learn Premiere Pro because most of the industry uses Premiere Pro. They already have licenses for it. It's powerful. They're always bringing out tools to improve it and make it faster. But you're probably screaming, I can't afford the 50 pounds or the $50 a month. Well, you have to think of it this way. As a freelance video editor, you are running a business now. You are the business. And these costs at first, whilst they might feel like a personal expense, they are a business expense. They are inevitable. As a business, you incur costs. That's a fact. Just like taxes, you have overheads. And you have to pay for these, like accounting. Whether you are going to hire an accountant or whether you're going to pay for accounting software to help you calculate your accounts, you still have to incur a cost at some point between receiving money and sending it to the tax man. There is a cost involved. And so that is a business cost. It's inevitable. And if you didn't invest in either an accountant or a piece of accounting software, it's going to cost you even more to do all of that yourself. And you also risk losing money by doing your accounts incorrectly. It's very much the same with your editing software. This is your sole tool. If you had no other tools and you invested in nothing else, your editing software and your machine are everything that you need as a freelance video editor. Without those, you don't have a job. So you need those. And by investing in one that works for the rest of your career, it's an upfront investment that will pay dividends. Now, Adobe are always running promotional offers for anybody who wants to start learning Premiere Pro or wants to purchase a license for the first time. So if you'd like to know what discounts are available, I'll post a link in the description where you can find some discounts. And if you are already a subscriber, then I'll post a little link to help you get that discounted as well. So when you do start learning Premiere Pro, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to learn is how to use the keyboard shortcuts. So for more information about how to edit faster, how to use those keyboard shortcuts, and how to speed up your workflow, check out the next episode.